Okay, so now we've connect, we've connected this label with our code. We haven't provided Xcode with the code to do anything with this label yet, but Xcode at least knows the name of this label and when we go to a different file it will um, provide a, a space where we can write code. Okay, so um, if you come up here, you'll see at the moment we're in the main view controller.h file. Okay, where we actually type the code is in the main view controller.m file. Okay, so the h is called a header file, and the m is the main um, implementation file where we actually write code. So if you select that, And you'll see here there's a bunch of code that Apple has already put in for us. And um, some of these bits of code will get called automatically at various stages. So when we run our application and this main screen first comes up in the, in, in the uh, simulator, okay, everything in this particular method will get called. And I know that because the method is called view did sorry, got the wrong one. View did load. Okay, so this method gets automatically called when the view has been loaded. So in Objective C, which is the language we're using to write our iPhone apps, um, the method names very often describe when the method gets called. So this method gets called after the view has been loaded. Okay. This method here, for example, view will appear, will, will be called immediately before the view appears on the screen. This method here, view did appear, will be called immediately after the view has appeared. Okay. So if you want to do things just before a screen comes into view, you want to update a label or uh, you want to do some calculations before the user sees the screen then you can choose where you put your code in order for that to happen okay so in this method here view did load the view will load and then uh, we will change this label to read something else now even though that happens after the view has loaded it happens so quickly, like uh, milliseconds, that the user actually doesn't see the tr the the words being changed. Okay. Now up here, you will notice this at synthesize my label. So in the header file, this is what we added. We called our label my label. Xcode has automatically put this thing in for us. It's also automatically put this line of code in as well without us having to do do anything. Okay, so they're bits that will be explained to you later, but at this stage, uh, all you need to know is that Xcode put those bits in for you. We didn't have to type those in. Okay, so we're going to put our code in the view did load section. Okay, so after this line here, put your cursor and then go down a couple of steps. Now to, to make reference <clears throat> to make reference to our label, we could just type in my label. Okay. But because we have done this here, alright, which will explain be explained to you at a later date, we have to actually put self in front of it. Okay? So self dot my label dot text. Okay. The text that is inside this label. Okay. Equals. Now text is what we call a string. Okay. And the way we make reference to strings in Objective C is by the at symbol and then open brackets 
and we have to end every line with a semicolon. So you'll notice all of these lines end with a semicolon. So anything inside these two inverted commas will be what will appear on the label. So we could change that to hello sports science world. Okay, if we save that. So even though the label says hello world now, when we run this application and it loads, the label should read this. Okay, so if we run the application, okay, you can see there the label that we initially had said hello world, but by running this code immediately after the view has loaded, it's changed the text to what we included here. So the text of the label reads, Hello, Sports Science World. And we didn't have to do anything to make that occur, okay? Because this method here, the view did load method, was executed immediately. The application first fired up, and then the view was loaded. loaded. Okay, so we didn't have to push a button or do anything like that. Okay, so now what if we want to change the text by pushing a button? So if we want to push this button here and make the check text change to something else, what we need to do is go back to our header file. Okay. And like we did last time, by clicking and dragging, we need to do the same thing. Okay. Uh, before we do that, I'll just change the title of this button to change text. Okay. And like we did last time, push the control button, click and drag. This time we're going to create something that's below this show info. So make sure you're below it and there's this horizontal line comes up. Release everything. Okay. Now this time we don't want an outlet. We actually want an action. Okay. And actions, IB actions, you can see here, IB action. This is what you want when you want the user to interact with an interface element. So if you want them to push a button and then something happen, like word, like happened with this, we push this button and the screen's flipped around. This method gets run when you click this button. Okay. So when we click this button, we want an action to occur. Okay. So the connection needs to be an action. And we need to give that action a name. Okay, now the name of the action, in other words the method, can be different from the name of the button. In this case, we will make the name of the button, the name of the action, the same as the name of the button. Okay. Now convention has it that uh, um, you start with a little letter and every successive word is starts with a capital. Okay, and the reason for that is it just makes it easier to read. The event is when you want the action to be initiated. Okay, a touch up inside simply means when the person's finger comes off the button. Okay, but you can choose another way of executing the method. Okay, so you could choose touch down, and that would be when the person first touches the button. Okay. The default is touch up inside. And the reason for that is if they push the button and then change their mind, okay, they can slide their finger off the button and it won't fire. Okay. So touch up inside is the default, so you, you can just leave it at that. The sender arguments leave that. We'll go into that at a later date. Hit the connect button and in, now you'll see there's a second IB action has been added called change text. Now IB action simply means interface builder action. So Xcode knows that you've connected up this particular button with a method. Okay, so it's a way of connecting your code to the interface element. 
So like we did last time, uh, we actually write the code for this method in a different file, which is the .m file. So head on over to the .m file. Now Xcode has actually provided us now with the starting point for this method. It's put the code in here. Um, it's put the name of the code, the IB action, everything that was uh, put in, in the other file, it's added automatically so we don't have to write this out. As in all of these other methods, the code that we want executed when the person pushes the change text button needs to go between these curly brackets. Okay, So if you put your cursor to the right of this curly bracket and then return a few times, it'll give you some space to write your code. So as we did up here, self.mylabel.txt equals hello sports science world, we want to execute the exact same line of code, but with a different set of text. So we could just copy all of this, come down here, and paste it, and let's just change this to hello hairy bikers so we know that it's worked save that run it okay so because because we haven't deleted this when the view loads it's executed this line of code so that's correct Hello Sports Science World. But when I click this button, it should change this to Hello Hairy Bikers. There you go, it's done it. Okay, so what you've done is you've connected up a button to a method. And the method is called change text. And then you, inside of this method, you've put a line of code that changes the text of the label called my label to this particular string. Okay. So get out of here. So like we did with this, if we wanted to clear this label, okay, we create a second button that will get rid of the text. Okay, so I'll change this to clear. Come back over to the .h file like we did before control click and drag okay we want to create an action again and this time we want to say clear text okay we want an action okay touch up its side sender connect that up okay so we've got a new method now called clear text head on over to the dot m and as before, Xcode has automatically put the, the method, uh, the skeleton of the method in for us. So it gives some, give ourselves some space. And to clear the text, all we need to do is get rid of the text. Okay, so it will set the text of my label, which is this up here to zero effectively okay run that okay the view has loaded so it's put hello sports science world as we wanted it to change text hello hairy bikers and clear gets rid of it if we hit change text again it should put hello hairy bikers back in clear hello hairy bikers clear Okay. 